switching to Linux or at least trying it out, you've come to the right place. I was a Windows user for many, many years. I'd been using Unix to do a little bit of software development, and I had even dabbled in Linux's predecessor, Minix, a bit. But my comfort zone was thoroughly entrenched in Microsoft Windows. I had purchased a lot of Windows application software, and I had several computers that had been carefully groomed to run Windows and Windows applications. I even had several pieces of special hardware that worked with Windows, but I wasn't sure that hardware was supported by Linux. But I did it, and I'm glad I did. The good news is that Linux can look and feel a lot like Microsoft's Windows operating system. You are now looking at a Linux desktop. And before we dive too deeply into the details of switching to Linux, I want to give you a little tour. I will need to spend a little time just chatting with you. To keep things interesting, I've got my Linux desktop displaying a few interesting and dynamic items while I talk. And I might be clicking on a few unfamiliar icons or tools just to show them off a bit. The details I'll be talking about won't necessarily match the flashy stuff you'll see on my screen. Don't worry about that. Just sit back, relax, take it easy, and watch. I want to keep this interesting as I show you what Linux looks like. And if you'll give me a little time in this and in some upcoming segments, I'll help you relate it to your old, familiar Windows environment. After the tour, I'll lead you step by step through everything you'll need to do to get Linux running well on your modern PC or laptop computer without deleting or even affecting your Windows environment. You will be able to return to Windows anytime you want without a second thought. But for now, let's talk about how Linux looks. First off, you need to realize that there are a lot of different versions of Linux. I've chosen PC Linux OS as the basis for this presentation because, in my opinion, it looks and feels enough like Microsoft's Windows to help increase your comfort level. As I said, you are now looking at a Linux desktop. In most respects, it behaves like desktop environments in other popular operating systems. The display is dominated by a large open area on which you can place icons representing uh, your favorite programs or tools. You activate one of those by clicking on it with left click, click, and then a new rectangular frame will appear on the desktop displaying the activities of the corresponding application or maybe covering up some of those icons. Just as you might expect, you can move it around by left clicking on it and dragging it around. You can make it bigger or smaller by dragging the corners or the edges. You can activate drop down menus in the usual way and uh, you can even kill a process by left clicking on a prominent X closure box. It's uh, pretty much what you'd expect. It's going to be familiar and comfortable to you if you are using Microsoft Windows because these are the same things you've been doing in Windows and other operating systems and you will hardly notice any differences. One area where you will notice a difference, however, is that Linux usually manages more than one desktop for you. At first, this will seem strange. As a Microsoft Windows user, you've been accustomed to handling all of your tasks on a single virtual desktop. Perhaps you've noticed that your desktop can become rather cluttered if you have a lot of active tasks. Well, Linux will help you tame that clutter. Take a look right down here toward the bottom of my screen. See those six rectangles, rectangles, rectangular areas? One, two, three, four, five, six. These six rectangles represent six different desktop environments, each of which is available whenever I want one. I switch between desktops by simply clicking one of these little icons. Click, 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 click. Each can hold its own combination of applications. Although I've set up this copy of PC Linux OS for up to six of these virtual de desktops, I could just as easily have set it up for four or five, five or maybe even ten of them. Each remembers what I've been doing with it. 
so I can hop back and forth between desktops and resume work and develop work patterns that make sense to me. See how I do this? Simple click, there's desktop two, click, desktop three, click, desktop four. On any of these desktops, I can activate programs and move them around in a really convenient way, just like you might expect. It's almost like having six Windows computers at my disposal at all times. If you take a look along the bottom edge, you'll see this row of icons representing active tasks. Windows calls this area the taskbar. In Unix, it's known as the kicker panel, or simply the kicker. The kicker is divided into several sections. The icons toward the left here represent um, tasks that you want to keep handy at all times and you might want to find them on all your desktops. Those icons are constantly displayed on the kicker and they just float right on the kicker panel itself with no little frame around them. Whenever I hover my mouse over one of these, a pop-up box appears displaying helpful hints about what it is or what I might want to do with it. Just to the right of those permanent icons, Linux can display additional icons in little frames. Each of those represents a running process and if I click on one of those, like uh, this, I'm immediately taken, actually I want to do this one, if I click on one of those I'm immediately taken to the uh, desktop where that process is running. If I'm already on that desktop, then by clicking on that same kicker icon I can alternately minimize and maximize the corresponding process. Here I'm doing a click to minimize, click to maximize, click, 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 click. Makes it easy to man manage desktop space and keep things clear and uncluttered. It's a natural, intuitive, and familiar process. If you've already been using Microsoft Windows or some other mod modern graphical operating system, you'll find it easy to get used to this. At the lower left corner of my display, let's get rid of this, the lower left corner of my display, you can see an icon representing the start menu, pretty much like you've learned to expect with Microsoft Windows. On my PC Linux OS desktop, it says PC. Left clicking on it activates a pop-up menu that will help you find programs that you've installed. That menu is divided into three convenient sections. At the top, you'll find a list of the programs that you've used most recently. Clicking on any of those would launch the program corresponding to that name again on your current desktop. At the bottom down here, you'll find um, a, a list. You'll find a few tools that you may need at any time, like the Leave button. You'll use that when you want to log off or power down your computer. The middle of the PC Linux OS startup menu is dominated by a list of your programs divided up into categories. You'll notice a little arrowhead along the right edge. An arrowhead like that means that related information is available just by hovering your mouse pointer on the corresponding item. For example, when I hover my mouse pointer over the Internet category, I see a long list of the Linux programs that I use in order to access Internet resources. Other categories, like editors or games, are similar. Sometimes there are subcategories, as you can see here, representing many different types of the free games available on my system. Um, over here, for example, I'm already running a free little program that lets me imagine that, um, that I'm flying a World War II era flight simulator with my joystick. Well, that about wraps up my introductory tour of the PC Linux OS desktop. Other versions of desktop Linux are similar, and in general, you'll find that you're able to navigate and use a Linux desktop pretty much the same way you learn to use Microsoft Windows. This is just one video clip in a series of related clips. Other clips in this series will help you find download, install, configure, and use PC Linux OS on your computer. Please join us on YouTube by searching for the AskMrWizard.com channel where you'll find a playlist with all of these clips arranged in the proper order for you. There are also a lot of other interesting playlists there if you like technology. You'll also find related items on our main website at www.AskMrWizard.com and there are prominent links to the best of those resources in YouTube's descriptive text below this window on YouTube. Thanks. We appreciate your support. Please subscribe today.